Welcome to PACE Interviews with the Experts, and today I'll be talking with Dr. Micah Woods again from the Asian Turfgrass Center, and we're going to be discussing a new idea, minimum levels for sustainable nutrition. And what we're going to try to do is figure out how we can do a better job of resource management and cutting the required nutrients down just to the minimum to, to maintain the turf at the expected performance levels. So let's just take a look at what we're talking about. Uh, and we're going to compare this, not going to compare it to, but uh, it's an alternative to base saturation ratio, the BCSR that a lot of people have uh, talked about and continue to use, which uh, we don't think uh, has a role any further in uh, turf grass management systems. Uh, sufficiency levels of an available nutrients, which generally when uh, recommendations come out of a lab, they'll, be for, they'll say that there's low, medium, or high, or optimum, or excessive levels. And then with the new, uh, new idea that we're trying to present here is to figure out how low can you go to maintain an acceptable performance. So we're going to try to drop the levels right down to the bottom. And Micah's work with potassium uh, was the start of uh, moving all of the rest of the levels down. So if we look at the minimum levels, uh, we're focusing on sustainability, uh, reducing inputs, and reducing costs. Because there seems to be a lot of pressure now uh, to get some of the costs under control at golf courses and try to make the uh, industry a little bit more receptive to uh, environmental pressures. And, and also we still want to maintain uh, expected turf performance. So we're not talking about compromising turf performance, we're just talking about being smarter with the way the nutrients are utilized. And those levels, if we looked at uh, BCSR, they would range between uh, 68 and 80 percent which depending on the soil that you're in, you could have down to 200 parts per million to up to a several, several thousand parts per million. So those ranges really didn't seem to uh, work too well. For sufficiency levels of available nutrients, uh, this 750 part per million number that uh, we're using at PACE was derived from some work uh, that uh, Bob Carroll had conducted at University of Georgia. And we'd done some survey work that we stuck with that. And then the work that Micah is uh, working with uh, PACE on is a, a new level at 350 parts per million, which we feel is safe to use without any, uh, without any problems. And Micah, you can sort of give us an idea of what you're seeing uh, on extraction or movement of calcium uh, through systems, where, what the inputs are and then where it goes and how it's distributed. Thank you, Larry. I, I started thinking about this, I think, because I kept seeing soil samples or, or nutrient levels in the soil where for potassium or calcium or magnesium, the levels of those elements were according to conventional soil recommendation guidelines. It would seem like those levels were really low. But when we looked at the turf grass performance, the quality of the grass, the health of the grass, the performance of the turf as a playing surface, is very, very good. So here we are with, with levels in the soil that seem like they're really low by conventional thinking about soil testing or, or interpretation, and yet, yet the turf was performing extremely well. So I made some calculations of how much of an element is actually in the soil and how does that relate to expected turf uptake. And over the course of a growing season, there's, there's a lot of... Um, research that comes in at around 400 grams of dry matter production per square meter uh, on, on an annual basis. And we know what the nutrient levels tend to be in the leaves. Nitrogen will be about 4 to 5 percent, potassium will be about 2 percent, and calcium comes in at about 0 0.4 percent up to about 0 0.6 percent. That's pretty typical. If we do the simple calculation of 400 grams of dry matter produced, clippings produced and harvested from one smear per year, and look at how much calcium is actually in the clippings, that comes to be about two grams of calcium per square meter up to about five grams of potassium, uh, sorry, calcium per square meter per year. That's what's actually harvested. If we look at what's in the soil, if there's 200, even if there's only 200 parts per million calcium in the soil, that's enough, uh, that's enough calcium to supply 30 years of uptake at 1.8 or 2 grams of calcium harvested per year rate. Right, well, so you're saying that there's really tons of, uh, tons of calcium in the soil, uh, and then we, we talked over some of the ways that it might go out of the soil in addition to pulling the clippings off, which some of it can leach out. 
uh, but still it seems like there's an abundance of calcium uh, in in the most in in most cases. So, absolutely the the uh, the amount like uh, if we had 400 parts per million calcium, I calculate that there would be enough calcium in the soil at that one point in time to supply the plant for 60 growing seasons. For um, so that's a lot, and and when the calcium does leach out of the soil, that tends to be an acidifying process. So as long as we're monitor, monitoring pH um, and we keep the pH above a level of about 5.5, we won't have any problem with the lumen toxicity. We won't have a problem with uh, calcium deficiency. So it's uh, we don't really have to worry about the leaching because if we monitor pH, we can take care of that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I you know I and you know I sort of push the pH up to about six. So we're we're <laughs> we're close on all of these things, but it's a I'd like just a little bit more of a buffer in there. And there's nothing wrong as far as um, let me. How do I want to put this? There, the only problem with using these excessive levels of calcium in the system is primarily cost and environmental impacts, which are not too high. So it doesn't mean that you can't grow good grass at these excessive levels. It just means that you're not getting any bang out of your buck. You're just putting a lot of materials out that you don't need to have. Yeah, and and if the if the uh, CEC is relatively low, you can keep putting out calcium uh, month after month, year after year, and you don't increase the amount in the soil because it, it you'll leach a lot that um, that doesn't get stored uh, in the soil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so what uh, what Mike and I did is we went back and took a look at uh, some of the data, uh, this some of the paste data, and we're looking at on the x-axis uh, soil calcium in parts per million and tissue calcium on the uh, y-axis, and there's really no correlation between those values. And even uh, if you look at the lowest levels in there, uh, there are 300 parts per million, and and the range in uh, tissue levels go from 0.4 to almost uh, 0.65. Uh, percent calcium in the tissue, so we're really not seeing any uh, soil tissue interactions like you were like you were suggesting. So that doesn't seem to pop up anywhere, and we don't see it in the literature anywhere uh, either. So we haven't ever seen uh, a situation where we can uh, get the calcium levels so low that we see something going on in the tissues. Although some people have pushed uh, the calcium out of the system to the point where the pH drops down to the 4.8 or the 4.5 range, and they start to see some aluminum and manganese. Uh, toxicity issues in, in uh, for example, in Bermuda grass. But as long as you keep the pH up, there doesn't seem to be a problem with the uh, with the calcium. Because that sounds good to you. Okay. And then we just looked at. Uh, that sounds we, good to we, me. Yeah. Okay. And then we went and looked at the Pace Turf uh, Soils database just to see how we could how these uh, numbers would sort out. And we're looking at uh, in this graph calcium parts per million in the soil, uh, about 1,300 samples of from good performing greens. So all of the greens were doing well as far as performance rated by the superintendents, so there isn't any issue about any of these levels of calcium in here. So I figured one way to, to approach this issue about trying to push the requirements down was to uh, move it from the average down 1.5 standard deviations. So that takes you down to 95% of the samples will have about 350 parts per million or more in them. And just using that empirical number, uh, seems to be a good starting point and if we get people to start reducing their calcium levels we can even push that down further as we get a better idea of how those uh, those calcium levels can be dropped out to uh, to the really the minimum level for sustainable nutrition. Well that sounds good Mike. I guess uh, this final slide shows us that the targets we're looking for is about 350 parts per million calcium using this is Millic 3 extraction and all the data was uh, run through one lab, Brookside Labs, and we also want to make sure that we keep the pH, uh, we got a range between 5.5 and 6. I'm sort of leaning towards 6, Michael likes 5.5, It's but somewhere in that range you're probably going to be okay, and as long as you have those two parameters uh, in that range, you're getting pretty close to a very safe but minimum level 
uh, not quite half of what the uh, previous sufficiency levels uh, were set at. And for all those people that work in uh, areas of the country where sodium is an issue and diseases like rapid blight are an issue, we're going to address that in a, in a future video uh, that, that talks about how we uh, can manage uh, sodium a little bit with uh, using calcium. But that's not a nutritional issue uh, for the plant. That's more of a uh, uh, stress issue uh, for the plant based on a, a, an element like sodium. Do you have any other uh, any other ideas or thoughts to contribute, Micah? Not really, Larry. I think we've covered it all, and uh, I agree wholeheartedly. So I'm I'm looking forward to this and uh, continuing this discussion and seeing lots more good performing turf grass areas at a uh, more sustainable level of calcium in the soil. Sounds good. Thanks for your time, Micah, and we'll see you next time. Thank you also.